What is up YouTube? Welcome back to the Only Lens channel. I'm your host Aiden and I got a spicy brew for you all today. Norn Swift Survivalist is my pick for the Sleeper Commander from Dustmorn. A lot of people wrote this little one drop off as being too difficult to get to work and, or, and just the payoff not really being worth the effort you need to put in. So what does he do? At a first glance, this one drop doesn't do too much. When an opponent blocks one of our creatures, we may exile that creature and then cast it from exile until end of turn. But we still have to pay the cost for that creature that we have to play from exile. I'm going to show you that this effect is not only powerful, but creates a really unique and interesting deck that I haven't seen any other commander be able to pull off. Norin allows us to easily reuse any enter the battlefield and any cast from exile triggers whenever our opponents block our creatures. And now you might be thinking, how are we going to force our opponents to block? Aren't they just going to let our creatures through and then our commander doesn't generate us any value at all? And we do have a few ways to force our opponents to block, but honestly, I think this is a fake problem. If our commander is a 1 mana 2 1 that makes all of our creatures unblockable, that sounds super powerful to me. We also do have a few ways to generate value when our opponents, uh, when our creatures hit our opponents, so it kind of puts our opponents in a lose-lose situation. They can either allow our creatures to hit them and they take a lot of damage while we generate some value, or they block and allow us to generate even more value. With creatures like Professional Facebreaker and Ragavan, we're going to be cooking with Szechuan peppercorns, Calabrian chilies, and habaneros. That's right, I'm talking spice. The kind of heat that makes our opponents go, ooh, ow, my taste buds, I mean my hit points. If you guys have seen my Felisa deck tech, which is my favorite deck of all time, you should guys should definitely go watch that video right now. Actually, wait till after this video, but then go watch that one. Then you know I love putting my opponents in lose-lose situations, and that is exactly what this little Swifty does. This is only the tip of the iceberg for the spice in this list, but I'm going to save the rest for later to keep you guys watching the whole video. Without further ado, let's get into this whole deck tech. Let's get into those payoffs. Genesis Chamber and Araxa allow us to go wide whenever we're recasting our creatures from exile. Combine this with Agate Instigator and Perforos and we can start dishing out tons of damage. Agate Instigator is especially potent because if he ever gets blocked, we can replay him and trigger that offspring again as long as we can pay for it, allowing us to generate more and more instigators. This is going to build up a ton of damage over time. This go wide and direct damage strategy allows us also to easily take advantage of City on Fire. Martin Stromgold is also extremely potent when we are going wide. He will buff up our entire board, making it very difficult for our opponents not to block our creatures without just dying. And our commander alleviates the biggest weakness of Martin, which is that he doesn't buff himself, and he has to attack to buff the rest of the board. So if our opponents block the Martin to try and kill him, we just exile him and then replay him, allowing us to protect him. Barchild is another great method of going wide. We can play her early and get in that early damage, giving our opponents creatures that they can't block with and will only be able to attack others. And then if she ever gets blocked herself, we can just exile, take all of those uh, one ones that we've been throwing out there and then replay her. Flaming Tyrannosaurus and Nalfeshni are just amazing when we're casting lots of spells from exile. And then Fanatic Amogus and Passionate Archaeologist round out our direct burn damage. Our final win con is a pet card of mine, Surge to Victory. This card is amazing when we're going wide, and it, again, really encourages our opponents to block our creatures, because if they don't, it can allow us to have some insane turns with cards like Jessica's Will or Inspired Tinkering, allow us to basically just storm off out of nowhere. I know I said we don't really care if our opponents block or not, but it is still nice to have a few cards that force our opponents to block when we really want to generate that value. Academic Dispute is a great little 1 mana instant, and the best way to take advantage of this is use this on an opponent's creature and then attack them with only the one creature that we need to have blocked. That way we can guarantee to get that creature blocked, exile it, and redeploy it for value. Our best method of forcing our opponents to block though, however, is Invasion Plans. This is an amazing old enchantment that just allows the attackers to choose how the creature is blocked and forces all creatures to block. 
This allows us to get in with the creatures we want to hit with, and then have all of our other creatures that we want to get exiled and redeploy for value get blocked. This combines really well with our three zero cost creatures because we can force our opponents to block them and then exile them and generate free value from all of those cast from exile payoffs I went over. Just be careful when you deploy invasion plans though, because it does make it so your opponents will be able to hit you for a lot of damage as well. So make sure when you play this, you're taking the most advantage of it and always attack with any creatures that you don't want to die as blockers. We have to pay for our creatures that get blocked in from exile, so it's really important to have creatures that can help refund some of that cost. Cards like Generous Bl Plunderer, Brazen Collector, Magda, and Charming Scoundrel are all really effective in this way, giving us mana or treasure that we can use to replay those creatures when they get blocked. Also, cards that refund us red mana like uh, Runaway Steamkin, Bergy, and Defiler of Instinct really alleviate a lot of these costs. Cost reducers like Ruby Medallion and Hazardous Monument are also great in this regard. Additional early ramp like Ragavan, Mox Amber, Curse of Opulence, and Guild Artisan combined with our one mana commander can allow us to get off to some really fast starts. And then Professional Facebreaker can generate us a ton of treasure when our opponents decide not to block our creatures, allowing us to easily redeploy. And then Rose is just an insane value engine for any deck that can consistently attack, and we can easily freely attack all three of our opponents, starting as early as turn three, considering all of that early ramp and zero cost creatures. So Rose is just an absolute all-star here. Mana Geyser, Goldspan Dragon, Cavern Horde Dragon, and Neheb all give us huge bursts of mana, allowing us to easily redeploy any creatures that get blocked, while also allowing us to play any other additional cards from our hand that we need to generate value. Neheb has the added benefit of encouraging our opponents to block our creatures as well, and Cavern Horde Dragon synergizes really well with those cards that give our opponents artifact tokens like Genesis Chamber and Generous Plunderer. Now for the final piece of spice that I was referring to in the intro, and I'm talking theft cards. Theft cards work amazingly with Norin, because we can steal a creature, and then if our opponents block that stolen creature, we can recast it from exile if we have the treasures to pay for the colored pips, and then keep that creature permanently. And that's the best case scenario. And the worst case scenario isn't that bad either. We can use these theft effects as political tools to steal the biggest threat off the board, attack one of our other opponents, and just get them to block it, and then we leave it in exile forever, effectively giving us uh, exile creature removal in red, which is really difficult to come by. Really love Call for Aid in this regard, because it allows us to basically just wipe out whoever the arch enemy is at the table. We'll take all their creatures, attack the other two players, and when they block, we'll just leave those their best creatures in exile, essentially setting them back to the Stone Age. Now, it will take a little politicking to get full advantage of using these cards as exile, but politics are always fun, so I'm here for it. To round out our interaction, we're going to take full advantage of having a one mana commander. So if we're of course playing Deflecting Swat, as well as Flare of Duplication, which this card is I love this card in this deck. We have tons of cheap little one mana red creatures, and it can allow us to copy a removal spells or counter spells in a pinch, or we can use it on our own Jessica's Will or Inspired Tinkering to have huge plays. Tybalt's Trickery will allow us to protect our board from board wipes, and then Chaos Warp can answer any permanent on the board, which is always amazing in Commander. We need those ways. This is red's best removal spell for sure. You guys know I included Liquid Metal Torque so we can turn our artifact removal like Untimely Mount function into any non-land permanent removal. I consider this one an auto-include for any mono red deck, honestly. And then we have Blasphemous Act and Spectacular Showdown to round out our mass board interaction. Spectacular Showdown is awesome in this list. We're going to be dealing lots of damage, we want to be burning the table out, and when we're stealing our opponent's creatures, those creatures having double strike counters on them is going to be a benefit. Not to mention, we can always just use it to give a Cavern Horde Dragon double strike to generate tons of treasures in a pinch. The final piece of this puzzle is just card advantage. We are going very fast in this deck. We have a lot of mana generation and a lot of ramp, and we're going to be playing our cards very quickly, so we need to make sure we can keep that gas flowing. 
we have a bunch of impulse card draw spells, which synergize well with our cast from exile stuff, of course. And then Dragonhawk, which I love this card. It feels really powerful every time I play it. It's constantly drawing you two to three cards a turn, as well as just dishing out any burn damage if you're ever not able to use those cards effectively. Pinnacle Monk is a great MDFC, allowing us to rebuy those impulse draw card draw spells or just our interaction pieces. And with Norin, we can easily get people to block him and then reuse him over and over, which is always nice. Skull Clamp, which is very useful when we're generating lots of 1-1s with Genesis Chamber, and always can be used in a pinch to sacrifice our commander. And with all the cost reduction stuff we have, I actually did use this in a game to replay my commander three or four times just from the command zone and draw tons of cards to keep my chain going and was able to burn someone out of the game from 51 life after they had ink shielded me. So they were going to, about to swing back at me and lethal me with a bunch of inklings and prevented my big 36 damage swing while gaining a buttload of life because they had like a soul sister or something. And then I was still able to just play my creatures and cast a lot of spells from exile, generating more and more creatures with Araxa and burning them out with Agate Instigator. It was awesome. Tome of Legends is great for any one mana commander, especially one that can attack consistently like Norin. And then Seize the Spotlight is basically just always going to be a draw three, make three treasures because nobody's going to want to let you take their creature and let you exile it when you swing at someone else and they block it. Renzo can further incentivize blocking while also giving us some goad outlets and additional card advantage. And then Wheel of Misfortune is just our big refill spell that can just draw us a whole new grip of seven cards, which is always useful in decks with such high velocity like this one. Wild Magic Sorcerer can generate us additional casts from exile. Imperial Recruiter can find our key pieces, such as Professional Facebreaker. And of course, you guys know I'm running Goblin Engineer and Curse Mirror. I love this interaction between these two. It just lets us find all our key artifacts like Skull Clamp and Genesis Chamber, and we generate plenty of treasures to fuel the Goblin Engineer. And that's going to do it for this deck tech. Leave a comment down below what you think of this one. I'm really proud of this. I've been having a ton of fun in playtesting with this deck. And it's really unique. And people are sleeping on Norin. I think Tomer from MTG Goldfist rated him in the lowest tier on his Dustmorn Commanders tier list, which I know isn't necessarily a power ranking. But still, I think people are sleeping on this guy. So, remember to like and subscribe to my OnlyLands for the spiciest deck content on the internet. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>